ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we hear the old fellows tonight, here's a breakfast treat for those youngsters of yours. Horlicks malted milk powder sprinkled over the top of bread and butter, then slightly browned in the oven. Or Horlicks sprinkled right on freshly buttered toast. One of Lum and Abner's friends sent in these ideas, and she says they're delicious. They do sound delicious, don't they? Now, another thing this mother gives her youngsters is Horlicks powder sprinkled over fresh fruits and cereals. A lot of you have tried that, I know, and found the youngsters love Horlicks that way. Keep a package of Horlicks on hand, always. It's great for youngsters in whatever form they take it. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are now out of the show business. Last week, they sold their circus to Squire Skim for $1,000, only to learn later that Squire had already made a deal to dispose of it for $4,000 before he made them the offer. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Lum back over at Pine Ridge, down at the Jotham Down store, explaining to Dick Huddleston and Grandpappy Spears how Squire swindled them out of $3,000. Listen. Well, yeah, um, you ought to know Squire Skimp well enough for this time to know that he'd give you a skinning if he got a chance. Why, sure, he probably had the animal sold to the zoo in there at the county seat before they ever offered a thousand dollars for the circus. Yeah, I found out all about it after it's too late. There were nothing I could do about it then. I done find that auction business. I telephoned Abner just quick as I found out about it, but he done find it too. Yeah, that's why I just went out of the store whenever you call over long distance, Mom. Well, that's the same, Mom. Just send you out of three thousand dollars. What he done? Well, I ought to had more sense than to, to deal with Squire Skimp, knowing him like I do. But I was just so anxious to get shut of the circus, I'd mind not give the thing away to somebody that had took it. Genoa was gone, and Abner had took out on me, and I was getting sort of homesick. Well, you sort of made a little money out of it anyway, didn't you, Mom? Oh yeah, we made some. This money that Abner taken and saved for us mounted to something over eight hundred dollars, and. Of course, the $1,000 that Squire paid us. Yeah. And we had something like $300 cash money on hand when it sold out to Squire. Well, good. We'll have around $1,500 in the clear after I get done settling up some of our bills. First thing I want to do is to go into the bank in the county seat there and pay off that $200 I borrowed in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd get those bills paid up and... And just put the rest of it away before somebody comes along and beats you out of it. Well, don't you worry about nobody beating us out of it, not long as we got me. I don't like to make no brags about my own doings, but a feller's got to get up awful early in the morning to beat me in a trade. <laughs> well, Squire Skimp must be a pretty early riser then, Lum. <laughs> uh, oh, well, if you mean that deal the other day, uh, that weren't my fault. See, I tried to catch Abner before he signed that option. Well, you'd already signed it, though, Lum. Yeah, but it weren't legal till both of us signed it. When Abner put his name on it, that closed the deal right there. Yeah, but I was here when Abner signed it, Lum, and the only reason he done it was because your name was already on there. He figured you knowed what you was doing or you wouldn't have signed it. Well, the best thing to do is just forget about it. The deal's over. Ain't no use to cry over spilt milk. Yeah, sure. Well, that ought to be a lesson to both of you. Just can't cut Squire Skimp, Lum. I believe that's our ring. Yeah, go ahead and answer, Grandpappy. It's more likely somebody wants to order something and... I don't know what we've got and what we ain't got now. <laughs> yeah, it'll take you a few days to get back in the hornets here again, Mom. Uh, hello? It's a got them down store. Huh? Who? Why, yeah, he's uh, sitting right here. Oh, uh, why, he ain't going to do nothing to you. Come on over here. Why, he ain't no such a thing. Who is it, Granddad? Uh, it's Abner. He's here to come over here. He you give him a whipping. Oh, for goodness sake. Tell him to come on down here. I want to see him. Uh, Abner, Lum says to come on down here. He wants to see you. No, he don't. He... Oh, uh, he ain't going to do no such a thing. Wait a minute. I'll let you talk to him. Yeah, let me talk to him. He's scared to death. That's the reason he called up. He wanted to find out if he was here first. <laughs> let me have that receiver. Hello, Abner. This is Lum. I, uh... Hello? Hello? Granny, he must have hung up the receiver. Are you and Abner still fussing about that money that he took from a circus loan? No, we ain't fussing. He still thinks I'm mad at him over it. 
Well, why don't you tell him that you know why he did it and that you're not mad about it anymore? Well, I want to see him and thank him for it, but I can't get him cornered to do it. I've been over there to his place a half dozen times to see him, and he always hides from her. Every time I see him downtown, he strikes out for home in a dead run. <laughs> and he thinks Lama is going to give him a whipping and send him to the penitentiary. Yeah, but I said I was going to do that before you fellas explain to me why he done it, why he taken the money. Sure. Now I want to thank him for it. He just saved me and him all that money by taking it out of the safe is what he done. Why, sure he did. Um, I'd have spent every dime of it on that electric sign with Zenora if he hadn't did it. And I've told him time and again that you weren't mad, but he won't take my word for it. Thinks I'm trying to help you get him cornered. Tell you what you do, Grandbab. Uh, call him over there at the house and tell him I just now left, and he'll be all right for him to come over here now. Yeah, get him on over here, Grandbab. Yeah, but he can look through them front windows and see you in here, and if he does, the body couldn't drag him in here as a team of mules. Well, you could uh, hide till he gets on the inside here, Mom. Yeah, I'll tell you what to do, Grandpa. If you call him and get him on over here, and uh, when we see him coming, I can hide behind the counter till he gets on the inside, and then I'm one of you can lock the door to where he can't get out till I've had a chance to explain to him that I ain't mad at him no more. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing to do, Grandpa. Call him up and get him on over here. Yeah. Call him up and see what he says. Why, well, sure. <laughs> Tell him you want to play checkers. That'll get him over here. <laughs> yeah, he'd get up at night to play checkers. <laughs> Hello? Peabody, please? Oh, uh, Elizabeth, is Abner there? Uh-huh. Uh, tell him to step to the telephone, please, ma'am. Said he's playing checkers by himself. <laughs> by himself? Yeah, he's always doing that. Set and play checkers by the hours. Make out like he's playing against somebody. <laughs> and cheat, I never seen nothing like it. <laughs> Well, he ought to have no trouble winning that way. <laughs> Hello, Abner. Uh, this is Milford Spears. Yeah, Grandpa. Why, well, Lum's gone home now. Come on over and let's play some checkers. You have. Well, Elizabeth said you was playing, but I never knowed you was playing again me. Yeah, well, come on over here and see if you can do it. Yeah, naturally you can beat me and you play on both sides. <laughs> well, hurry. All right. So he'd be right over. Well, good. Said he done beat me nine games. He'll never see the day he can do that. <laughs> well, I'm anxious to see you fellas get this misunderstanding all straightened out here. Get it all over. Yeah, I am too. I don't want him going around thinking I'm mad at him when I'm plumb tickled to death over what he done. Why, no. And you fellas are just $800 better off, too. Yeah, this is one time Abner showed better judgment than I did. I was so in love with Zenora, or thought I was, to where I sort of lost my reasoning. That broke a long record for me, too. I'm, well, I won't say just how old I am, but that's the first mistake I ever made, I reckon. <laughs> there he comes. Yeah, here he comes, coming out the front gate over there. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Well, let's see now. I better get behind that counter over there. Get him on in here and get him to talking and grant up you sort of shy around to the front door and lock it before I come out. Oh, well, I don't think we'll have any trouble with him, Mom. I don't know, Dick. He's awful skittish. Yeah, he's harder to catch in a rabbit. And Granny's I walked in Moe's Moots Barbershop Saturday afternoon, and just as I come in the front door, he went out the back. Lit out for home. <laughs> well, Matt Lung, you've made so many threats about what you're going to do when you did catch him, and he's not taking any chances. I guess he figures the best thing for him to do is just keep away from you as long as he can. <laughs> hey, Henry, come. Yeah. You better get over there behind the counter, Long. He'll be where he can see in the inside here in a minute. Yeah, and I don't let him see you, Long. I don't let him see you. He won't oh, come there. You better be uh, talking about something else to where he won't get suspicious or not. Yeah, well, now, keep your head down there till Grandpa can get the door locked behind him there so we know we got him on the inside here. <laughs> there he comes. Yeah. And yeah, watch him looking around behind him. I reckon he's expecting Lum to jump out on him. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason he's walking so fast. It's kind of a dog trot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's been scared to death. Yeah, I'm Richard, sure. Well, on. well, Lum made a mistake of making so many threats. He got him scared to death. Cedric went to him and told him everything that Lum had said. Well, I told Abner and Lum never meant a word of it. Well, you know, I, mean, you know, I told him the same thing, but he just believed that Lum said he's going to whip him, he's going to whip him. Hardest headed this fellow, I mean, hardest head, hard headed this fellow I ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just a shame I had to have his yeah. trouble. Don't, don't let him. Don't, don't let him. Oh, no. Now, you going up to the door there so you can lock it, Grandpa, and then I'll call him on back here in the store. Yeah, you just tell him come on back here. Yeah, sure, that's what I'll do. Well, come in, Abner, come in. Well, howdy, Grandpa. 
What's that you said about beating me a game of checkers? Uh, you heard what I said. Well, howdy, Adner. Well, hello, Dick. I never noticed you something back there. Now, let me get this door here. It's getting sort of chilly in here. Yeah, come on back and sit down, Abner. Yeah, my survive. How have you been? Oh, all right, I reckon. I've been staying around the place there pretty close. I never want to get out none. Me and Law ain't getting along, you know, and I, I just... Well, Abner, I've been trying to get you cornered for a week. Oh, my goodness. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Let me get wait out Wait a minute. Here. Wait a minute. I want to talk to get you. Get out of the way, Grandpa. Get out of the way, hey, Grandpa. That door's locked, Abner. That door's locked. Now, stop him, Grandpa. Stop him. Well, for the land of sake, a crazy idiot. Did right through the plate glass window. <laughs> well... The old fellows have their differences straightened out now, if Lum can just catch Abner to tell him. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm especially pleased tonight to be able to let you hear the part that Horlick's malted milk played in bringing up Mrs. W.W. M.'s baby. Mrs. M. comes from Siwami, Tennessee, and this is what she says. Listen. Not long ago, a little baby came to our home. Nothing seemed to agree with her, and she just became weaker and weaker. At two months, she weighed two pounds less than at birth. We tried everything, but nothing seemed any good. Then I saw Horlicks in the drugstore. Well, I bought a package, and I'll never forget how quiet and restful she seemed after the first feeding. The first real feeding she had had. She started gaining, and at five and a half months was a fine, healthy baby. Now, this may sound like a boast, but it's true. At six months, she received a blue ribbon at the fair for being the healthiest baby ever. You can easily see why I'm all for Horlick's malted milk and, of course, for Lum and Abna. Well, that's fine, Mrs. M. We're glad that you found Horlick's so helpful. And we certainly appreciate your telling us about it. This is Carlton Bricker speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick's, who bid you all good night and good health.